You're complaining about God. Do you see how God already set up a feed program, a welfare program for him? The first uh, feed a child program. The first wick. Amen? But the men were included. Amen? Frosted flakes from heaven. Amen? God was preparing it. He had a way already prepared. Panera bread from heaven. Manna. Come on. Let's look at the next one. Almost finished. Next slide. Then Moses continued, you will know it is the Lord when he gives you meat each evening and more than enough bread each morning. What God wants you to understand is that he is the one that's sustaining you. Right when you thought to quit, God is the one you think you're carrying yourself. God has been carrying you the whole time. Think you made it through your rough patch. You that made it through your rough patch. It was God carrying you. He is really the one you are complaining about, not us. We are nobodies, but the Lord has heard your complaints. Moses turned to Aaron and said, bring the people together because the Lord has heard their complaints. Aaron was speaking to them, and everyone looked out toward the desert and saw the bright glory of the Lord in a cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard my people complain. Now tell them that each evening day they will have meat, and each morning they will have more than enough bread. Then they will know that I am the Lord their God. God's just trying to, in the midst of trial, trying to prove to you that he's the one that is sustaining you and providing for you. It's not your education. It's not your good looks. It's not just move talking. It's not your northern accent. It's not your southern draw. It is God providing a way for you. Amen. That's something to praise God about. That evening, a lot of... That evening, a lot of quails came and landed everywhere in the, in the camp. The gospel bird came down. You see why people won't eat chicken at the church? And the next morning, dew covered the ground. Started all the way back then in the Old Testament. After the dew had gone, the desert was covered with thin flakes that looked like frost. The people had never seen anything like it. And they started asking each other, what is it? Both answered, this is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. And he orders you to gather about two quarts for each person and your family that should be more than enough. And they did as they were told. Mm, some did. But you know, there's always going to be a few folk. There's always going to be some of us out there. They're going to want to get more because we're going to be greedy. We can't believe that God's going to provide. And so some gathered and some gathered less according to their needs and none was left over. Moses told them not to keep any overnight. Some of them disobeyed. But the next morning, what they kept was stinking and full of worms, and Moses was angry. Some tried to keep more because they didn't want to trust God for the next day. And sometimes we try to take more to what God has for us because we can't trust that he's going to be there in the future. You only can get what God wants you to get in your time. That's the problem with the body of Christ right now. We get so fat on our own selves because we don't want to trust God on a daily basis. Are y'all with me? How many, how, why do you need five cars? Are you with me? Amen. I'll take that too. Amen? You got, you, you got to trust God. Amen? Let's, let, let's keep going. Wrapping it up. Next one, please. Next slide, please. Need y'all back this. Somebody hit it. Hallelujah. Just get me right here. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 9. They're going to wake up back there. Amen. It says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh, or what? They will reap corruption. But he that soweth to the what? Spirit. Come on. He that soweth to the what? Spirit. He that soweth to the what? Spirit. Shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. What does that mean? If you invest in the flesh, you're going to produce what? Corruption. Corruption. Fleshy things. But if you invest, the word sowing speaks of investing. If you invest your time, your talents, and your energy in the things that are of the spirit, it's going to bring life. Eternal life. And let us not be weary. Let's don't get tired in well-doing. For in due season... We shall reap if we what? Now, look, what do you do when the, the battle lasts longer than you, you thought? One, you get weary. And let's define what weariness is. It means to lose a sense of pleasure, to not feel the enjoyment that you once felt. How many have been there before? How many are there right now? 
How many getting delivered? Amen. When the battle goes on and on, battle fatigue will have the tendency to set in. You got to be able, you got to be willing to, you know what, not be moved by that. Amen? Problem number one, if you allow yourself to get worried, you will be tempted to quit. Slow down or quit growing. On our way to victory, we will always have to face the weariness test where we are tempted to give up. It never comes when we are fresh. This test always comes when we are tired. Got a minute left. How many know that's so true? Let me cover a couple things that you got to do. You got to make sure that you stay growing. This slide needs to catch up. Amen? Galatians 6 and 9 says, let us not grow weary in, in doing good for a new season. If we faint not, two key words, faint not. In other words, if we don't give up. When you are discouraged, you see the problem instead of the possibility. You got to move from just looking at your problem and seeing the possibility of what God's going to do. Weariness leads to discouragement. Hallelujah. I need you to keep me going here. Don't worry about them. Go back. Don't quit. Now, here's the key, because I'm wrapping up right now, and they're, they're way behind up there. I'll talk to them afterwards. They got to catch up. Don't quit growing. Here's the first thing you got to do. Who remembers the three keys to breakthrough? What are they? You just can't say them. You got to do them. Just can't say them. You got to do them. Prayer, fasting, and giving. The Bible says, Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, also when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrite, for they love to pray. Y'all can catch up back there, praise God, and get to this slide that talks about don't quit growing so that the people can see that. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. Also, you must not be like the hypocrite, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by people. Truly, I tell you, they have their reward. So the Bible says when you pray, so there's an expectation that you're going to pray. But when you pray, go into the private room. Tell you how you're supposed to do it. Not all in public where everybody can see you, but seeking the face. And whenever you fast, let us know you're supposed to fast. Not looking sad and telling everybody, I'm fasting. No, I'm looking for a breakthrough. Fasting doesn't move God. Fasting prepares you for the breakthrough. Are you with me? It prepares you for what God's going to bring you in. God, a lot of times, has already brought you in, but because you're so consumed with what's going on around you, you can't see God. Fasting opens you up. You empty yourself out of you so you can see more of him. Amen? And in giving. Giving. The Bible says in, in, in Matthew chapter 6 that charity, when you give. So let's just know, when you hear God say, when you give, is an expectation that you're going to have to give. Amen? So when you fast, when you pray, and when you give. Go to the next one up here, please. When you give. You can see these scriptures right there. When you fast, when you pray, and when you give. Matthew 6 and 3. It says, if you have faith in the size of the mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here, and there it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. But this kind does not go out except by what? Prayer and fasting. Some things aren't going to leave you until you get in that place of prayer. Get in that place of fasting. There's so much more I want to share tonight. Let I me mean, share today. I want to talk about the word. I want to talk about not forsaking and assembling of yourselves together. In Hebrews chapter 10, you just move that mind. All these things I want to talk about. I want you to keep coming to church. Matthew 10 and 24, write that down. But I'm going to hit it some more. Next one, please. Uh, Hebrews 4 and 12, how the word is a powerful two-edged sword. 2 Timothy 2 and 15, talking about studying and meditating on the word of God. Joshua 1 and 8. All these scriptures, we're going to be getting into it. Because these are things that you got to do when you are feeling like giving up. You can't just roll over and quit. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, get up, get up. and fight the good fight of faith. Fight good fight of faith. Amen. Stand at your feet, everybody. Stand at your feet, everybody. Give God some praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I can't stop. I won't stop. I won't give up until I get what God has for me. Did you hear me? I can't stop. I won't stop. I won't give up until I get what God has for me. And I'm telling you, God has something special no matter how young or how old. God has something special for you. But it comes by you standing. It comes by you standing. If you're here today, you say, Pastor, I know the Lord, but I need more of him. Just raise your hand. 
Just raise your hand. Raise your hand to him because he wants to give you more. He wants to give you more than more than you want to ask. Amen. So, Father, right now, God, we pray for every person with their hands up right now. And those that don't even have their hands up, we pray, God, that, Lord, give us more of you and less of us. God, if we just have to move, God, you didn't let us get far in the message because it's a reason. Because maybe you want us to stay right there in prayer, fasting, and giving. So excuse me for even trying to rush the process. We yield to you. And God, we move in that place of prayer. God, where there's been a blockage in our communication because of guilt and condemnation. God, we move it right now. I just hear some of you need to cut some things from your life. Some of you feeling guilt because you're doing some things that you know you shouldn't be doing. You need to cut it out. You got secrets with the enemy. God says it's time to cut it out. Once you cut it out, the guilt will leave. Once you come clean and expose, the guilt will leave. Amen? Amen. God is not call you. God says he's come to deliver you from your enemies, not your friends. Amen? As you cut it loose, God will do a 